Okay, we've got our three printed parts. Our bottom, our top, and our transparent PLA to let the glowy RGB lights through. We'll also need a strip of NeoPixel or NeoPixel style RGB LEDs. We need a momentary button. We need a 10K resistor. And of course, we need a microcontroller board. Now the board I'm using is my little tiny dev board, which is an ATtiny85 that I built and that I also sell on Tindy that's specifically designed for projects like this. It's designed with ground, VCC, and a pin out, pin zero, to be able to connect directly to an AeroPixel strip, as you can see. And it's also got an extra GPIO broken out at the top, which is for either input or output. In this case, we're gonna plug the button into that port so we can have some input. You don't have to use one of my tiny dev boards. You can obviously build your own board. Here's a, an example board, one of my earlier revisions of my tiny dev. This is also an AT Tiny 85. As you can see, it's just on proto board. It's got a resistor in there and a cap for power filtering. These were from my LED acrylic displays I did for my kids. So you can definitely build your own board or you can just use any microcontroller board. You just will have to build a different base for the microcontroller to sit in. So that's it, that's what we need. Let's get building. My tiny dev boards come with six pins for a program header and come with a male pin header that you can plug in, solder on and use to connect to an AVR programmer to program the chip. In my particular case, I don't want to solder that on and use it here because of the space required inside. So I'm going to use one of these. Here's my AVR programmer here with the six pins. This is an eight pin clamp that I can clamp directly onto the chip like that and I can program it. So if you don't have one of those, that's fine. You could always use either the pin header or depending on which microcontroller you're going to use, you'll have to modify the base to fit that in. Okay, let's see how this all sits together. So the button itself, that sits inside just like this, just in there. And the microcontroller itself is going to sit just like this, making sure that we've got the arrow in. The actual strip of NeoPixels are going to sit just inside the groove like that. So what we need to do is solder the strip onto the board. As you can see conveniently, the three pins that goes onto the strip is just sitting on the outside here. So they can be soldered onto the copper pads. Then we need to place a resistor in the trough from here that goes to the button. And we need some wires from the button coming around to the input and to the VCC power line on the microcontroller board. That's pretty much it other than running some power leads, kind of like these ones here with a plug, off the back of the board that'll go underneath. I'll show that in a moment. Then this sits on like this. It's a tight fit, but it's supposed to be a tight fit because we want to make sure that the LEDs are butting up against the transparent filament. And then the actual case itself has got a little noggin to fit on the button. That just clicks into place. There we go. And it's done. We have a clicky button. While the lid's on, I'll turn it over and you can see there's a gap at the bottom with a hole there so the power cables will come out there and out the side. And in my case I'm just going to plug a barrel jack into it. It's a 5 volt power supply. I believe this one is 4 amps so it's plenty of power to drive these pixels. And that's it. So let's start soldering everything together. Okay we've got a whole bunch of stuff in front of us right now. I'm going to start off with the 3 pin header that's going to connect the NeoPixel strip to the microcontroller board. So I've just taken a normal three pin header and I've grabbed the plastic on it and I've pushed it onto the table just a little bit like this, give it a little bit of pressure just to make the ends as short as possible. So that way when I put them in the board and I solder them on, they're very, very short. I don't want them sticking out too far at the back. And the other thing I wanna do is I wanna cut them on the other end nice and short because I just need them to be able to sit just here on the NeoPixel strip and I don't want them pushing too far. So I probably only need half this length. So I'm just gonna do that now. Just make sure that when you cut them, you hold both ends so you don't get metal flying in your face. So as you can see, they're nice and short now, which is just what we want. Get these other bits away. Okay, so we're gonna start off by soldering the header directly onto the NeoPixel strip. First thing we wanna do is just put some solder on the end of the pads 
just to tin them. It's one, two, three. Great. I'm just going to turn it around now. I'm right handed, so it's easy for me to always have my iron coming from the right hand side. I'm going to place these on. I'm going to hold them down with my tweezers and I'm going to solder them on. Okay, so now we have a header that's soldered onto our NeoPixel strip. Perfect. So now we need to solder it onto the board like this. So I'm going to flip that around. I'm going to do this one handed just to get at least the first one. Make sure you're doing them the right way around, obviously. Okay, now that that's in place, I'm just going to turn over and do the second two just from the side. Let's have a look at how that looks. Okay, just need a bit more in the middle one. There we go. Let's reflow them a bit. Okay, so now we have a NeoPixel strip connected to our microcontroller board. So as I showed before, it's going to sit just in there and wrap around. And the reason we wanted the back of it to be so short is we didn't want to accidentally have those pads here touching the wires on the back. Okay, now it's time to wire the button together. So I've got myself two pieces of wire. I've already stripped the insulation off one end. I've got my 10K resistor and I've got some heat shrinking. I want to make sure that I don't have any exposed contacts when I solder everything together. With the heat shrink for the resistor, I just want to take a little bit off the end and that's going to sit just over here. You can actually get it on afterwards if you want to, but that way I can heat shrink the end when it's on the button. We need to have red for VCC. It doesn't matter what color, but I'm using red. So we need to have red on one side and we need to have the 10K resistor being used to pull down to ground. So they're both going to be on one side like that. And then we're going to take the blue wire, which is the wire that's going to go to the microcontroller for the input. So I am going to make it easier myself to get these together. I'm going to actually hook the ends of these wires around so I can rest them over the button like this for when I'm soldering. Okay, just like that. So rest that back on again. So now they're on, just let them cool down for a moment. And then we're going to put the heat shrinking on. You don't want to touch the solder too quickly, you'll burn your fingers. Blue goes on blue. Unfortunately, I don't have any red. I might actually just cut these in half. Actually, we could probably even go into quarters. Just needs to cover the joints. One, two. So now I'm going to use a hot air gun to melt the shrink wrap. So the shrink wrap not only insulates the joints and protects them, it also gives them a little bit of strength. I want to get our base, and we need to work out how it's going to sit. If I go this way, Make sure the button can still fit inside. Just like that. So the button goes in. Our resistor is going to be sitting around like this. This wire is going to be going around to VCC, so we know where we need to cut it. And this one's going to be going around this way to the input. So as you see, everything will be tucked neatly away. So our input's going to be sitting around, let's give ourselves about this much slack. That's plenty. Now VCC is going to be sitting around here and I won't actually cut the resistor yet so I want to feed it through on the board and actually see where it needs to go because the resistor actually goes into the bottom pin down here which is ground and so it needs to come down and through and again I need to heat shrink it and make sure there's no touching any other pins. Okay for this project I'm going to be using a barrel jack like this primarily because I've actually run out of my cables like this. So that's fine, they've both got the same ends on them. So I'm going to use some pretty high gauge wire to connect this together. And the actual wire itself will go from here, in the screw terminals, directly onto the board here. And they're gonna to have to actually sit like this, and then straight away bend down to fit inside the gap. I much prefer working with solid core, but that's what I've got to work with. So I'll cut that back once it's been soldered on. Okay, I'm going to tin the ends of these wires to make them easier to work with. Please feel free to tin 
your wires however you tin them. I tin my wires the way I do. I'm definitely not NASA qualified. Whatever it takes, as long as they fit through the holes. Okay, now it's time to feed our button through onto the microcontroller and get that into place. Now, I've already put some heat shrink over the resistor in preparation of requiring it there. Once I've soldered it on, I can't get it on, obviously. So, we've got VCC on the top of the board. We have ground at the bottom of the board. So we want to, from the back, get our VCC in. I'm going to fold that over just to get it out of the way. Do it gently. We get our ground down the bottom, which is our resistor. And we want to fold that over to get that out of the way, to hold it in place. Great. And the last thing we want to do, coming from the other direction, is going to be the input, which is this top one up here. That one goes in and we'll get that out of the way. So, there are our connections. It's going to sit like this. It's going to be nice and tight. That's okay. Let's get this soldered, shall we? So let's start off with doing our input to one side. Now let's look at doing the other side. We'll clean them up afterwards. Super careful not to melt the strips. Great, just let it cool down. We kind of want to bend everything in place. We need to get the resistor pointing up, which is why I wanted to have the shrink wrap there because it's going to get very close to touching this other wire, which we don't want it to do. So let's get the shrink wrap in and shrunk. We're going to trim off these wires very gently because we don't want them touching. Okay, now it's time to get it all in place. Be careful with the wires. We'll get the button in, make sure the strip goes in, get the strip out of the way so we don't squish it in any way. It'll be a tight fit now, a very tight fit because of the wires and the buttons. It'll make sure that everything sits nicely in the grooves and the actual controller sits down low enough. Okay, great. So now let's get our transparent filament. Now this might be a little bit tight to get on now, but it will fit. So I'm just going to use these just to pull the strip around to make it nice and tight. There we go. And then we get our cover. Let's get our cover over the strips as well. Great. Perfect. Okay. And that's on. So now all we need to do is test it. Right now, there's just some strand test code on there. So it should just fire up the NeoPixels and make them go colourful. Which it is. Oh, this looks fantastic. This is my first time seeing it, folks. This is the only one I've got. That just looks incredible. Let's just go from the side. So you can see from the side. That is just amazing. So the idea is you'll be able to put the coffee on and as you click this or change it, the colours will change. Let's turn the lights off and see how that looks in the dark. Disco coffee cup holder. Okay, it's time for our final testing. This is in its normal state. We take a hot cup of water, put it on, and there it goes. It's warming up my water. Well, not really. It's um, just fake warming up my water. Take it off again. Goes back to nice, pretty rainbow. How cool is that? Okay, that's it, folks. Thanks very much. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you already haven't. If you're a new subscriber to my channel, welcome. Until next time, catch you later.